So the Ugandan economy is actually going through a bit of a challenge at the moment. It's an economy that's always grown at a compounded annual growth rate of high single digits, 8 9%. Did that for almost two decades. But since 2013, we've started growing at less than 5%. So it's a bit of a concern on how we've sort of lost our way. And 5% sounds like a good number globally. But for Uganda, it isn't because we have a population growth rate of 3.5%. So we really need to be growing double the population growth to sort of bring people out of poverty, etc. cetera. Um, having said that though, the policy, the investment climate is very attractive. Uh, the government is spending a significant amount of money on infrastructure, which I think is the right policy, uh, just to open up gateways to trade, allow for movement of goods and services, you know, push on our export markets. And he's also doing a lot in sort of maintaining um, Uganda is a very attractive investment destination. Uh, we are probably the most liberalized economy in the region compared to Kenya and Tanzania. Uh, we have absolutely no capital controls. You can bring money in in the morning, take it out in the evening. There's no uh, foreign exchange controls and a very, very strong independent central bank. And we're about to get to a very important um, injunction now where we are going to monetize our oil and gas. Uganda found oil about 10 years ago. We've now reached a final investment decision, and it's going to be about a $15 billion spend uh, for a country that has a GDP of $30 billion. So the government needs to figure out how much of that we're going to be able to keep in the ecosystem. And I think that if they can unlock that, we can get back to our high single-digit growth numbers. So it's an ambitious target at 48%, and, and maybe that's what we need. But I would be happy even with a 25-30%, because I also recognize Uganda doesn't have the capital. 15 billion is a lot of money. So that capital has to come from foreign sources. Stanbank Uganda is unique. So when Standard Bank bought this bank in uh, 2000, I believe, it was the People's Bank. It was the old Uganda Commercial Bank. It had a 100 branch network. I believe the next bank had probably 10 or 15 branches. So it was a fantastic distribution network and it came with purely retail business. In fact, there was very little corporate at the time. So we've always had that consumer piece. In fact, it's our legacy. We added the corporate banking later. The corporate banking has, has contributed almost 80% of our profits more recently. But trying to get the retail piece back together is in really important, and we're working on that. So I think logistics is going to be a big one. Uh, when I think through uh, what's going to happen in the next three to five years, as all these goods get moved, you know, um, as you know, we're a landlocked country, so everything has to come through the coast. I believe some of the other traditional sectors like agriculture, uh, which employs almost 70% of Ugandans, is a huge opportunity. But even that, we've only scratched the surface. 50% of arable land in East Africa is in Uganda. So Uganda was blessed with having a fantastic climate, but we failed to harness that opportunity. So we need to get, again, investment into the right sectors and add value to agriculture. Right now it's just been raw sort of harvesting of coffee, green beans, and exporting them. Uh, but there's a lot of value addition that could be added into the sector. So I find that also an attractive place. And then lastly, ICT, just generally the trends that are happening in telco, in data, and, and all that is, is also a huge opportunity.